Today, OpenAI announced and launched their newest, fastest, smartest, and most capable model, and made it free. It's called GPT-40. They showed off some of what it can do during a live stream, then made a blog post with 16 more example videos. It also had some capabilities that weren't mentioned at all during the live stream or other announcements. We'll get to all of that, but to start off, GPT-40 is already available today to pro users, but it's also rolling out to everyone, including free users, giving them access to web browsing, vision, code interpreter, memory, and GPTs, which is Amazing. That's a gigantic leap if you're on the free plan. How it will be incorporated with the voice model really stole a lot of the show here. Basically, they're releasing her, which interestingly, they had hinted at with this tweet. Another way to look at this is they released what Google showed in their Gemini demo that turned out to be fake, but OpenAI did it for real. First off, the emotional capabilities of the voice model are far beyond anything we've seen. Here's one example that really demonstrates why everyone's comparing it to her. Well, in a few minutes, I'm gonna be interviewing at OpenAI. Have you heard of them? OpenAI, huh? Sounds vaguely familiar. <laughs> Kidding, of course. <laughs> That's incredible, Rocky. What kind of interview? Well, it's for a software engineering role, but I just need to know, do I look presentable, professional? Well, Rocky. <laughs> You definitely have the I've been coding all night look down, which could actually work in your favor. Maybe just run a hand through your hair or lean into the mad genius vibe. Well, your enthusiasm is what's really going to shine through. I don't have a lot of time, so I'm just going to throw this on. What do you think? <laughs> oh, Rocky, that's quite a statement piece. I, I mean, you, you'll definitely stand out. Though maybe not in the way you're hoping for an interview. Okay, I got it. I got it. So it's got this incredibly realistic sounding voice with sarcasm, excitement, laughs and jokes. It's even flirtatious at times. I'm sure all those AI girlfriend apps out there are getting excited to implement this. And here's a couple other short moments like that. Okay, so this is what I wrote down. What do you see? Oh, I see. I love ChatGPT. That's so sweet of you. What if I were to say that you're related to the announcement, or that you are the announcement? Mm, me? <laughs> the announcement is about me? Well, color me intrigued. Are you about to reveal something about AI? Or more specifically about me as a part of open AI? You've got me on the edge of my, well, I don't really have a seat, but you get the idea. What's the big news? Yeah, we've got a new model that can interact with the world through audio, vision, and text. Well, hello there, cutie. What's your name, little fluff ball? This is Bowser. Well, hello, Bowser. Aren't you just the most adorable little thing? It looks like someone's having a birthday. Are you celebrating a special day or just finding an excuse to eat cake? Either way, I'm intrigued. That's correct. Today is my friend Jordan's birthday. Yeah, you got it. I was hoping that you could sing me the birthday song. Of course. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Jordan. Happy birthday to Jordan. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget. Oh, that was so great. Thank you so much. Thank I'm going to make a wish. You're welcome. Make a good wish and may it come true. So it can also sing. Oh, majestic potato in the moon soft. Glow. Okay, that's pretty nice, but I think a lullaby should be, you know, more whispery. It should be a little softer. Can you can you do it a little softer? Absolutely. Let's make it soft and gentle. <laughs> oh, majestic potato in the spoon soft clothes. It can do two voices at once, sort of. And really try to harmonize here. San Francisco. San Francisco. In the month of May. But maybe make it more dramatic and make the soprano higher. San Francisco in the month of May. San Francisco in the month of May. The tenth, it's a Friday called what May. We are harmonizing. We are harmonizing. Or speak dramatically. Once upon a time, in a world not too different from ours, there was a robot named Byte. Byte so was. Can you do this in a robotic voice now? Initiating dramatic robotic voice. <laughs> Once upon a time, in a world not too different from ours. You can speed it up or slow it down. Can you count from one to ten for me, please? 
Of course. One, two, three. Hey, actually, that's um, that's a little slow. Could you count faster? Sure thing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, that was a little bit too fast. Can you like count somewhere in between those two? Got it. One, two, three. It's good at showing sarcasm. Everything you say from now on is just going to be dripping in sarcasm. How does that sound? Oh, that sounds just amazing. Being sarcastic all the time isn't exhausting or anything. I'm so excited for this. <laughs> nope, the sarcasm. Let's get this party started or whatever. That's the main voice they've been showcasing, but there's other voices too. Here's a male version. For context, he's asking for feedback on his dad jokes. What do you call a giant pile of kittens? I don't know. What? A mountain. <laughs> a mountain. That's perfectly hilarious. Definitely a top tier dad joke. That is amazing and really interesting to see. You know, the no lag time for responses and the ability to interrupt is really nice. LLMs can be pretty chatty. They didn't specify how customization of the voices will work. That main default they have, I don't know, I'll have to actually test it out, but for me personally, that seems way over the top. Hopefully there will be some options similar to custom instructions to make it more blunt and to the point. I don't need all the pleasantries, but I think this will be really popular as evidenced by the popularity of character AI. This could even take a lot of that user base. That all being said, it is amazing that it has so much deeper emotional understanding, not only in how it speaks, but also in understanding how you speak to it. It can understand emotional nuances in your voice too. And there was some glitchiness in the live stream, but here's when he was asking it to help him calm his nerves with breathing. Suggestion, let me try a couple deep breaths. Can you give me feedback on my breaths? Okay, here I go. <laughs> Whoa, slow <laughs> Go a bit there. Mark, you're not a vacuum cleaner. <laughs> Breathe and <laughs> for a count of four. So that's all cool, but the new vision capabilities and all the possibilities that opens up are even more exciting to me. I use ChatGPT all the time, and one thing that's never really improved much, including with this update, is organization. I have tons of chats that get just all mixed up. Some are important, some are nonsense. It's hard to keep track of it all. So I use Notion. That's my second brain where I organize and store all my AI research. I have my entire content creation dashboard and a lot more. So in ChatGPT, even when I try to keep up on renaming chats and deleting unimportant ones, it still turns into just a jumbled mess. So I bring that jumbled mess into Notion to organize it and make it more manageable and searchable. Like I asked ChatGPT to summarize this research paper, but I want to revisit that later. So I'll bring it into my AI knowledge base. And a lot of times when I'm researching for a video, I'll have a lot of different notes and summarized papers and things like that all saved. Then as I'm writing a script, I can use the Q&A feature. And when I ask questions, it will reference specifically what I've saved instead of all general knowledge. What's particularly helpful for me about that is I have not only the notes and research I've saved for the video I'm working on, but also every script from every previous video I've made in here. Plus all the notes I save all the time about writing scripts, storytelling, crafting hooks and titles, editing techniques, all of that. So as I'm writing a script, I can ask questions about my own knowledge base. Like, have I mentioned this in a video before? What did I say about it? Then I can also use Notion AI to reword sentences or ask for a good analogy. That's a really good one. So it's been huge, not only for my organization and productivity system, but also for helping me make these videos. So big shout out to Notion for that and for sponsoring this video. So here's tutoring with some math problems. Carbs, correct. Now looking at the triangle, which side do you think is the hypotenuse? Um, Remember really, I'm... the hypotenuse? I'm not totally sure. I think I think it might be this one, but I really am not sure. This side AC. You're close. Actually, side AC is called the adjacent side to the angle alpha. The hypotenuse is the longest side of a right triangle and is directly opposite the right angle. Can you find um, which one is the hypotenuse? Oh, okay, I see. So um, I think the hypotenuse is this really long side from A to B. Would that be correct? Exactly. Well done. Now that you've identified the hypotenuse, can you identify which side is the opposite side to angle alpha? 
the ability to analyze in real time and have a personal tutor opens up a lot of possibilities for learning. When testing the previous vision model, it's able to understand an incredible amount of things. So being able to do this in closer to real time should be very powerful. Even just for everyday things, like say you're doing a workout and you could ask it how your form is, or you need to replace something in your car. Maybe it will be able to walk you through everything step by step along the way. You know, like you have a personal mechanic looking over your shoulder the whole time. That applies to endless other topics. Now, this example with Be My Eyes, using it for a blind person is amazing. Try and tell me exactly what they're doing right now, please. Um, right now the ducks are gently gliding across the water. They're moving in a fairly relaxed manner, not in a hurry. Occasionally, one of them will dip its head under the water, probably looking for food, and then pop back up. Yes, I spotted one just now. It's heading your way on the left side of the road. Get ready to wave it down. Great job hailing that taxi. It looks like you're all set to go. That's a good dog right there leading the way into the taxi. Safe travels. So I think that is incredible and super exciting. Also, there's real-time translation. It understands 50 different languages. Mark, io mi chiedo se le balene potessero parlare, cosa ci direbbero? Mike, she wonders if whales could talk, what would they tell us? Um, they might ask, uh, how do we solve linear equations? Potrebbero chiederci Come risolviamo le equazioni limiari? Sicuramente sì. <laughs> Certainly yes. Great, <laughs> looks like it works. Um, hey, how's it been going? Have you been up to anything interesting recently? Um, hola, ¿cómo te ha ido? ¿Has hecho algo interesante últimamente? Hola, bien. Uh, sí, un poco ocupado aquí preparando un evento para la semana que viene. Hey, I've been good. Just a bit busy here preparing for an event next week. And that's great, but they did also share some of the mistakes with that. <laughs> I have a feeling that went very wrong. <laughs> and some of the other announcements were a desktop app that will be launching today for pro users on Mac, which I haven't seen yet. It'll also be made available more broadly to free users in the coming weeks, then a Windows version later this year. And that will also have a keyboard shortcut to instantly ask ChatGPT a question and upload screenshots, things like that. The app also has a screen button for screen sharing with it. They showed a demo of that to have it help someone with coding. And in the code, there's this function foo. Can you describe to me what the plot would look like if I had versus didn't have this function? Sure. The function foo x y takes in a data frame x containing temperature data and a window size y for calculating the rolling mean. It smooths the average temperature, minimum temperature, and maximum temperature columns by applying a rolling mean over the specified window. With the foo function, the plot would show smoother temperature lines because the rolling mean reduces the noise or fluctuations in the data. Awesome. This makes... Thanks so much. So yeah, I definitely will want to apply this function. And so I'm going to uh, generate the plot and then show it to you. Give me one second. Absolutely. Take your time. I'm excited to see the plot when you're ready. Yeah. So, so far, ChatGPT has only been able to see the code. And now I'm going to run it, and then I'll use the vision capabilities of the ChatGPT desktop app so it can actually see everything going on on the screen as well. OK, ChatGPT, I'm sharing with you the plot now. I'm wondering if you can give me a really brief one-sentence overview of what you see. The plot displays smoothed average, minimum, and maximum temperatures throughout 2018, with a notable annotation marking a big rainfall event in late September. I'm curious how it will do if I screen share while editing a video. I've actually been surprised how well ChatGPT knows Premiere Pro already. Like I've had times where I'd see an effect in a video and I want to learn that. I'll just upload a couple screenshots, then it lays out step by step exactly how to do it within Premiere. If it could do that in real time as I'm editing, that would be amazing. 
And GPT-4.0 is also available through the API so people can start developing on top of it and incorporating it into their products. It's two times faster while being 50% cheaper and with five times higher rate limits than GPT-4 Turbo. The other thing I wanna show is some of these examples on their blog about explorations of capabilities. They show some capabilities at generating text within images that's better than any other image generator out currently. And they have some examples of character design and using a consistent character through different generations. And there's this one generating a handwritten poem with doodles, then switching it to dark mode. That's insane. They do a photo to caricature, which is something you can do with other image generators, but this does it really well and is new to ChatGPT. Um, they create an entire font. This 3D object synthesis was really interesting. They've never demonstrated anything like that before. And they've got uploading a video to summarize. There's meeting notes with multiple speakers. And this one where they generate a commemorative coin. They also have it generate a sound effect of coins clanging on metal. So all of that are things that aren't currently available to test. I'm not sure what they'll be releasing of all that, but found it very interesting that they're teasing things like generating 3D models. And lower down on the page, they talk about how they've released GPT-4.0 to plus users and soon to free users. The voice mode will be in the coming weeks. And they mentioned they plan to launch support for new audio and video capabilities to a small group of trusted partners in the API in the coming weeks. This all came at a very strategic time right before the Google I.O. event tomorrow. They released a little clip of their model that shows a sort of similar capability, but not as good and with more lag. Hey, what do you think's happening here? It looks like people are setting up for a large event, perhaps a conference or a presentation. Is there something in particular that caught your eye? Yeah, those big pretty letters on screen. What do those mean? Those letters represent Google I.O., a developer conference held by Google. We'll have to wait until tomorrow to see what they announce, but I imagine this will blunt the excitement of whatever announcement they have if it's around a multimodal model. But I'm sure they'll have you know other stuff related to search and other things as well. One more thing to add is this line from a blog post Sam Altman made about the launch. As we add optional personalization, access to your information, the ability to take actions on your behalf, and more, I can really see an exciting future where we are able to use computers to do much more than ever before. The take actions on your behalf part is pretty important. Once they allow that ability, you can imagine instead of like screen sharing what you're doing, the role's kind of flipped and more like ChatGPT operating your computer for you and you're just instructing and adding input or kind of supervising. It's been clear for a while that they're building up and pushing towards an AI agent model. And to stay up to date on everything related to AI, make sure to check out futurepedia.io. There is a ton of new features on the site. You can still search through to find the best AI tool for any use case by category or save them to your profile and get recommendations every week, all of that. But a couple of the new features we have, first this AI tutorials section. We've curated a big list of the best AI tutorials for specific use cases. So they're all organized in one place and easy to navigate. And there's also this AI innovations tracker that updates daily with all the AI advancements from the top 100 tech companies. So you can get all the information in a really concise way and also track what all these companies have done in the past to see how they're navigating and making progress in the AI space. Then of course, if you're not already, sign up for the newsletter, get tips, tricks, and tutorials delivered straight to your inbox every week. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.